buying the wrong thing at the right time. I think there's two things that happen. Um, you can buy the right thing at the wrong time. So you buy, I don't know, uh, LeBron James PSA 10 refractor for uh, uh, $300,000 or something. Or, or base 10 LeBron for um, 46000 or $40,000 or $30,000. Like, maybe that's the right car. Maybe over time, like, it grows in value. Um, but if you buy it at the wrong time, like, it's going to take you forever to recruit your investment. Or you may never recoup your investment. Um, and then the opposite, which I think this is even more dangerous, buying the wrong thing at the right time because you make money but then you reinforce bad behavior so now you're buying second year cards third year cards championship cards um then you're buying like psa eight or nine cards or whatever because percentage wise maybe that goes up the most um but then you kind of get stuck on a cycle trying to do that when the market crashes or take big dips and then that's the thing that doesn't actually recover. Oh, yeah. And I think what happened is there have been a lot of content creators over the past few years, some flippers, some not. You know, I'm one of them. Uh, but I came in more towards uh, when the boom was coming, but I was a little more cautious. But a lot of people got confident and they're like, hey, I... 3x my money it took a 500 hundred dollar card and turned into 1500 bucks within three months i did that with a michael phelps uh signed autograph card this was like before the olympics started this uh -huh. was like 2020 2021 and no one was chasing olympics and then people started to chase olympics so then you had people who weren't sophisticated thinking hey this is a get rich scheme but in reality there's a reversion to the mean. Mm -hmm. So it's a law of numbers. So eventually if something's going up 3X like that in three months, well, it could go up 3X, but it may take maybe a couple of years instead, mm -hmm. if you're lucky. So a lot of people got emboldened. They didn't look at basic mathematics. And once again, people made bad decisions. It enabled bad behavior, like you're mentioning during the pandemic. And it's unfortunate because now, I don't know if you've noticed that there were a bunch of content creators in 2020. I used to mm -hmm. watch them. I don't see them anymore. I don't see them <laughs> posting on Instagram. I'm not hating on them. I'd love to see them do content, right? I want to see everyone do content, even if I don't agree with the person. Mm -hmm. and obviously, I'm an opinionated, but I do want to hear different voices and different opinions. That's how you learn. And you're not seeing that. And this bad behavior, unfortunately, has stop people from making content and some people have left they're on to the next thing now mm -hmm. and now people are bitter against you know some content creators which shouldn't be happening but that's just the nature of the beast yeah one of the things is um yeah i've noticed that because one of the people i was like listening to was like the high upside um and they just like disappeared off the map i think it was a uh, psa collector he was one of the first people really making content about like investing in cards and he came to greater card investor and then he's completely disappeared. Like, and I don't know, like, yeah, so he has so many views on videos and so many subscribers. And um, unless somebody like, you know, he got sued by somebody or something and some crazy happened. Wait, wait, he did get sued? Um, well, no, I'm speculating that could speculating. be something like that. But um, I don't, I don't, I don't know at all. But okay. this, just for someone in his position just to disappear off the map, something serious probably happened um, where, yeah, because I think the way he was starting, it was like him and the sports card investor where I, maybe his channel wouldn't be as big as sports card investors channel, but I would think it's still, it would be, it'd be much bigger than what it, even what it is now because he has like 66,000 subscribers or so 70,000 subscribers. And I don't know if he's made content in like, I don't know, eight months or something like that. Um, so it's just one of those things. But yeah, there's quite a few people. Even if, if I go and search for content, a lot of people have, have dropped off um, completely. 
Yeah, I think um, one of the things I think that that had a major effect uh, because of August of 2020 when th stuff was like insane i think yana's base 10 cars were like uh for panini prism got to like s going to seven to eight thousand dollars and i <laughs> i had a couple of them and i had some be just nine fives and i was like i was planning to hold this for two or three years but like the way this is going once it gets to eight around eight nine thousand dollars i'm just completely selling because i'm gonna like 10x my money because I bought them at seven eight hundred dollars, um, and then it crashed. I'm pretty sure it crashed just because um, the whole the NBA players basically wanted decided not to play, and I think that put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Because one, it kind of scares some people because they're just like, wait a minute, they can just like just decide not to play. Um, so I'm just gonna like take my gains now um and i don't know if they're gonna be another lockdown in a sense and then maybe they won't have another season or something like that um and then also i think um a lot of people who maybe were in Le into let's say lebron james um his show maybe like him being so vocal on politics actually turned a lot of people off because i think there's a certain percent of people who probably had his cars that you know, they saw it as an investment, but they just want him to play basketball and focus only on that. Um, and I think maybe a lot of people end up selling. And then I think that next wave of people coming in was um, a lot of was influenced by Gary Vaynerchuk, um, getting a bunch of people in. And then I want to say probably uh, another entrepreneur, Patrick David, And he probably... I don't know how well he knows Gary Vaynerchuk, but um, probably from the people in his circles, he knew a lot of people were going to like jump into the sports car market. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the companies like Rally, Collectible, Otis, and I think a few more coming up were like buying high end cars and wanted to do deals with them. Because like Patrick Bedeva was the one who sold the, um, the two Wayne Gretzky's. He bought them like 2015 or 16 um i believe and then he sold them for like over a million dollars or whatever um and he actually i was like listening to something because he mostly talks more about like politics and and finance on other stuff and like the car thing is like a hobby for him um but he does like he's more of like a investor slash flipper so he's trying to like buy something and double his money every year two years maybe five years with it and, and he plays this game of doubles that he calls it um but he was saying that like sports cars are going to get much cheaper in a sense um from his opinion from me listening to, to some of the more recent stuff from gary v he wants to stay positive but i think i get the read that he knows that like um, things are going to be more on a downturn in a sense as far as cards. And it's going to be a struggle for for a lot of people, I think. Um, and then everybody knows about what Vegas Dave uh, said. Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just uh, thinking about a few of the things you're saying. So Gary V, actually, I found this out through Ziggy. And he did a video, I think, a month and a half ago. This was, you're talking about prices were crazy in August of 2020. Mm -hmm. So he pointed to a video uh, from um, Luca Nation podcast. I don't know if you've heard of them. Mm -hmm. I've been on their program twice. And they had a guest on who I think is buddies with Gary V. And they were on a Zoom call. And apparently Gary V was able to convince all these high net worth individuals like Steve Aoki to just buy all these basketball cards. And I think LeBron James was part of it. And I know you did talk about LeBron James and the political um, talk. And that's why people weren't buying. But I thought August 2020, people were just buying up the cards like crazy at that time. And then the peak happened, I think, in February or March. But I think that was more of uh, Fleer 86 from my memory. I mean, it went to what, if the sales were legitimate, what, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. on Golden or PWCC, one of those two auction houses. 
Uh, but yeah, that was that. And then you're talking about uh, Patrick Bet David. I don't know if you saw that interview with uh, Jeremy Lee a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago. Oh, I was Sports Car Live. Yeah, he's on Sports Car Live. You should. That was one of the best interviews that I've seen, and that's when I first heard of uh, this guy. And he yeah, was, I saw that one. Okay, yeah, that was just an amazing interview, and he was talking about. You know, the sports card market pretty much is going to come down when the Federal Reserve is going to raise rates. This is a short term thing. And mm -hmm. what did they do this year? They rate, they aggressively raised interest rates and other interest rates went up as well, like the 10 year rate. And then sports cards have taken a huge hit and mm -hmm. other markets to uh, crypto, stock market, et cetera, the whole nine yards. So he was right about this, but I think from Patrick Bet David's standpoint, he's still bullish long term. It's just that mm -hmm. there's a time to buy and then there's a time to sell. And that's how I think he views the markets.